12 of the family members go through in the process of treatment. Now, I would think that most people do not like to think of death and dying. So now I'm going to tell you something lighter, but on that topic. A man died and went to the judgment. So he met St. Peter at the gates of heaven. St. Peter said to him, Before you meet God, I thought I should tell you this. We have looked at your life and you really didn't do anything particularly good or particularly bad. So we are not all at all sure what to do with you, where to send you, up there or down there. Can you tell us anything you did that maybe can help us to make this decision? So the newly arrived soul thought for a moment and the person replied, Yeah, once I was driving along and I came upon a woman who was being harassed by a group of bikers. So I pulled over, got out my tire iron, and went after the leader of the bikers. He was a big, muscular, hairy guy with tattoos all over his body, and a ring pierced through his nose. Well, I tore the nose ring out of his nose and told him, that he and his gang had better stop bothering the woman or they would have to deal with me. That's the reaction of St. Peter. I'm impressed, St. Peter responded. When did this happen? About two minutes ago. I don't know what happened. <laughs> now let's go back to the topic of death and death. It is such a somber subject. To many of us, death is even somehow associated with bad luck. And we try to evade it, like we try to avoid the unlucky number 13, or number 4, for Chinese. When I was on the Air Asia plane flying from Jakarta coming back here, I thought my eyes caught something I was not aware of before. My seat was 15 C and I noticed that after row 12 in front of me, it was next row 14. There was no row 13. Have you ever noticed that? That was the first time I noticed. I'm sure it was perfect, the row 13 was perfect, purposely kept. But can anyone escape death? The Gospel of Luke tells us that no one is to escape it, because terrible calamity will surely come upon the earth. Some will even die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the earth. But let us listen to this. Recently, someone shared with me his experience of going through a serious operation in a hospital. After saying a short prayer, he could really feel the presence of the Lord. He felt the calmness in him that he never felt before. There was such complete trust that the feeling of fear escaped from him altogether. He survived this life and death situation, but until now he could still remember vividly the feeling of being loved and assured by the Lord during that crucial moment in his life. Now things would go for the God either way, but it would not have mattered because he had this secure feeling in him. Sure feeling that Jesus was with him. What a wonderful feeling to have at the time that we needed the most. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is
is telling us today that He loves us and that we should not be afraid when we see Him coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Instead, we should stand erect and raise our heads because our redemption is at hand. Now, this may happen. I think most of us, many of us, will not experience it at the end of the world. We may, because nobody knows when. But maybe also we will experience it at the day we die. Knowing that it is sure to happen, brothers and sisters, why then do we try to find a way to stop it? Because we cannot. Instead of it, why don't we prepare ourselves well to face it when it finally comes? By remembering that Jesus is telling us that He loves us and that we should not be afraid because it is Him who is coming.